think I need to start talking. And as usual, I was finishing my slides just five minutes before the talking starts, which means that I never finished my talk, my talk, which is quite okay because I never actually finished anything that I started like I'm still 10 years on the university. No, 12, sorry. And when I started doing programming, um, I was five years old because my dad is crazy. And I grew up, I started doing other stuff, and one day I was seated in my computer trying to program, and I saw this. And this was an invitation for cute developers to start trying to port an application that was uh, initiated by Linus Torvalds using C and GTK. And man, I was thrilled because, well, as, as a kid, I always wanted to actually start programming with my heroes of programming, like I am a nerd for my whole life. And I had my first computer when I was two or three years old. It was an Atari. I don't even know if they make them anymore. And Dirk Hondo was a second in command of the Linux kernel, and he started this programming with Linux Torvalds. It's a diving application. I never dived in my life. But I really wanted to do one thing. And, well, I like to experiment with new things. So I did origami. And after origami, I felt that I was an okay origami artist. So I did pole dancing. <laughs> I did one or two years of pole dancing lessons. I tried to do a semi-professional pole dancing presentation in Brazil. But then I started doing theater. After I ended on the theater, I was a KDE developer. And uh, Fizzle. Fizzle is the biggest free software convention in Brazil. We have 10,000 people going there annually, usually. And, well, I don't, I don't feel shame about that. <laughs> and then I started tap dancing. For some reason. But... I really wanted to program something with Linux. Mostly because Linux thinks that C++ is a horrible, horrible language, and it's made more horrible by the fact that a lot of substandard programmers use it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where it's much easier to generate total and neuter crap with it, quite frankly, even if the choice of C were to do nothing but keep the C++ programmers out, that itself would be a huge reason to use C. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I made Linux Torvalds use C++. <laughs> and I'm not afraid of that. I actually put that on my resume. <laughs> and it is awesome because I was yelled two times to today. Which is nice, because usually Linus don't just yell, he throws people on the windows. <laughs> oh, uh, if I have time later, if anyone do the question, I will give the FES. Not for you, you have FES. So, I really like to be a vector entropy. I like to make Linus use C++. I like to make my wife, that is, they're afraid of me sometimes. <coughs> I like to make my brother say, oh my god, no. Well, I put my pole dancing picture on his Facebook profile. <laughs> <laughs> and then I downloaded the Git source from Subsurface. Oh man, it was a UI application done by kernel developers. It was a really big spaghetti code. Nothing was happening as I wanted as a UI developer. I, I know that I need to separate code. I need to do some stuff as MVC. And Linus told me that, well, that's just utter crap. You have no gain from doing that. Yeah. So uh, those were the original problems that I saw on the original code base from Subsurface. There is no, no separation between the UI and the core whatsoever. The lack of the knowledge in the original library. Now, I need to stop a little bit because I am a cute developer and the application was GTK developer, uh, GTK developed, 
And GTK and Qt are usually seen as fighting with each other, but that is not just true. The problem on this application regarding GTK is that the developers of the application, Linux and Dirk, usually, they didn't know how to use GTK. It's not GTK's fault. The fault of GTK there was they didn't find people on GTK to help them. The lack of UX, well, they are kernel developers. They don't care about UI, but they really needed to do something quite pretty if they want people to use it. And they had, in the time, 50 users. Now they have more than 3,000, so good. Uh, lack of integration in the base systems. They had an application that looked like really almost not user crap on Linux, and it looked like user crap on OS X and Windows. It worked, but it was not integrated whatsoever. And lack of anyone who gave it a shit because nobody was actually helping them to do anything. So they did, uh, sorry, that. They invited people to try to help. And I saw this. I was bored in my work and I saw this. And since I was doing nothing in my work, I was paid to just stare off the roof, I used my work time to develop SuperSurface. And this was the original SubSurface code. <laughs> Well, not really, but mostly like that. I mean, they, they had around 10 files for everything. It was scary. It is still scary. Because on the parts from C to C++, I had to still keep a lot of the C parts and the C++ parts. And, well, it's now like this. After two months of work, I've managed to separate the core and the interface. I'm going to show a little bit of the code, I'm going to show the interfaces, but I have no experience doing presentations. I usually am a latex guy, so it's usually worse than that. And core, it's a mess, and the interfaces is still a mess, because I am the only one that knows how to do the interface, and the core being a mess, I cannot actually make a really good code for the interface, because I have to deal with the mess that is the core. And, well, uh, mess, 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 no, 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 here, no, not that. This. So, you know that there is four on C++ and that we can iterate over collections. But because the core is written in C, our collection is actually a linked list written in C and we have a for each something for all of our types. And I have to use that. Is it a macro or...? It's a macro. Okay. Back, 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 back. Here. No, <coughs> not here. Here. So, um, the core is not my responsibility. The, the core is responsibility from Linux and Dirk, and I actually don't want to touch the code because, well, there is a, a function that is around 1,500 lines that I could replace by three lines in C++. That's the reason that I don't want to touch the core. So I done my work on the interface. And on the interface, I did a massive entanglement. But I couldn't really do what I wanted because both UIs needed to coexist for a while. The GTK should continue working and I had to create the Qt based on the same core. So I couldn't really break anything. And as little changes as possible in the core because the core people are C and they still want to use C. So I fixed the spaghetti codes and now I had this. I had a few classes that mangled the top window, the main window, the models for the data structure. On the C, everything was done inside of the interfaces. Now we have a somewhat clear MVC model for that. And there was one file that had 15,000 lines that created all of the graphs. Oh, let me try to show you this application because I'm not sure if you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, that. Where's the mouse? Help me find the mouse. <coughs> so, this is subsurface. And this is 
basically one of my hobbies nowadays, after theater and tap dancing and origami. Uh, this graph here, it has more than 17 different types of graph running here. And this little part here, it's 200 lines of code. Usually the, the size of this graph in the C code was around 15,000 lines, but it only had six graphs. Now it has 17 graphs and the size is the same because we actually managed to organize the code in a way that worked. And this is actually really cool. If you guys like to dive, I have no idea what a dive is. I've done a diving lessons after three months working on the system to actually understand what the hell I was doing. Uh, this is a dive to 100 meters and going up slowly for more than 40 minutes. Yes. Take the microphone. microphone, take it. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. So, and now this is a file, and right now this is a lot of different files, and each curve is a different class. And for, because of that, we could actually manage it to make it a lot I'm more dynamic. I, I only have we can have measure the graphs. We can put some. Yes. Oh. Hello. Hello, yeah. It's working. working. One, two, three. Okay. I would. But I have a bigger problem than that, and you see in the lens of the thingy. Where I was here. So now that application works we already have a lot of users and it's working on a lot of computers we have every programmer is on linux but the most user base is on windows which is a problem because we have one windows developer that's not paid to work on subsurface actually nobody is actually paid to work on subsurface we do it because we want to try to see if you can scare linux and make him annoy us and um, now remember this interface how can we put that thing inside of this? It is too big. I mean, the interface is too bloated. There is a lot of information. There is no native code there. I mean, we are using Qt widgets. Qt widgets will work on different operating systems, but it's not prepared to work here. And it has a deep integration with Qt widgets. I mean, there is buttons, there is lists, there is text, there is everything here is a cute widget. Besides the, the graph, the graph is my code entirely and not a really good one. And there is a globe here. That is pretty. And you don't need a globe if you're trying to run this on a mobile because on Android you already have the, the maps and on iOS you also have the maps. So we can just remove this. But the problems are there is six tabs there. That's too much information. There is 17 possible graphs here. I cannot show 17 possible graphs here. Uh, there is no space. And there is 15 columns that you can show on this list, which is quite too much. As you can see, this program was not thought at all to run on a mobile. And this was a problem. But we managed to build it and we run it completely like that inside of uh, I don't remember the name of the tablet, but it was an Android tablet and it run. But well, it was made for the mouse. It was hard to use. It was made for the mouse, not fingers. So you try to click on one thing, you click it on three things at the same time. It didn't felt like a mobile application and the, the dialogue, the, the files 
should be reshared somehow, some way, and the application didn't have access to the Android's operating systems to actually get the files, because Android and iOS, they have some strange ways of having the, um, any file that you want. It's not really like a Unix-based system or a Windows or anything. So it was, it worked, but didn't really, but it worked. And enters libgit and the cloud. Uh, libgit is awesome, and I'm not sure if anyone here did that because they didn't thought that this was possible with Git. But we are actually using Git as a file, not as a, um, what do you use Git for? <laughs> so, yes, a repository. We are not using Git for a repository. We are using Git as a file format, which is awesome because now we are storing everything in the Git, not as a text, not as an XML file. We are using Git storage information to save the dive, which is quite okay. And it's fast, and we can apply diffs over files. And if we sync something, we can just do a Git pull and pull only the difference of the Git repository, which is awesome because that file that I open here on subsurface, it has 80 megabytes of data because the guy that did those dives is just stupid and he dives with four different dive computers to test the software. <laughs> yes, I still think that he's crazy. And that's Linus, by the way. <laughs> uh, but with Git, we have a lot of things. We can add something and we can compare diffs, so it's really good for a programming perspective because we can diff the the file format that it generated, and it's easy to spot regressions, it's easy to improve. Uh, you get a Git repository for free, so you can send your dives to GitHub and then just Git pull. And you can use that to get the files on the computer and on the mobile. And because of that, we created the subsurface cloud service that is also free. And Well, it's free for the users because Linux is paying for that. And the problems of the Qt widgets that I said before, it's proven, it works, it will not crash, it's really lightweight, I mean really, really lightweight. For people that think that Qt is not lightweight as GTK, for instance, if you use the same stuff from GTK and from Qt, they both will use the same amount of memory on your computer, so not really different. And it's still used for, another, for everything. And there is Kim, oh, okay, it can be, you can use the core directly means that I can call the C code that the code is made of. And I've done that, I showed that before, so I'm gonna just pull over that. And enters KML. Uh, people here, do you know KML? Two, three, four, okay, quite much. KML is something that Qt created uh, not a long time ago, it was when Qt was sold to Nokia, and then Nokia sold to another company, and then another company split into other company. How can people trust that if the company is not solid? Well, you guys know Bentley, right? Bentley uses KML. You guys know Tesla. Tesla uses KML. You guys know Mercedes, BMW. They are starting to use KML. Uh, Samsung is using KML, uh, so how can you trust a company that's never really solid and stable? I'm not sure. They do trust for some reason. And one of the reasons is that this thing can run everywhere. On desktop, on mobile, on KNX. Do you guys know KNX? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so KNX is one of the most used operating systems for vehicles, for cars. And it's being used currently on embed systems. It's being used currently on airplanes, on cars, on smartphones, on drones, on fridges, on boats. And I actually did the first drone using KML. <coughs> it was amazing. I crashed at three. <laughs> literally. Literally, yes, literally. <laughs> because uh, uh, when you have the drone and you have no idea how to control it, well, that was my first crash. And then I actually, I put some parachutes on it, so it wouldn't actually crash that way. And then on my job, I had to replace an ARM core and change it to Intel. I was an uh, Intel developer. So we were trying to make the drone work on an Intel chip. The problem, ah, the problems. 
Intel chip was too slow to actually do the mathematical calculations that we needed for the drone on the first trial. And it completely collapsed when it started to roll down on the sky and crashed. And the parachute didn't work it because it tried to open, but it was spinning. It was awesome. We have the video for that. And KML started a long time ago when this was considered a smartphone. <laughs> this was... It was awesome. It was awesome, yes. It, was, it worked. It was the green phone, thank you, because I forgot. Uh, it was a little bit sluggish because we didn't actually have the OpenGL working on that thing back, back in that time. But it was the first trial of having something declarative to work. It used Qt widget, so it had a lot of uh, libraries to load. It was a little bit bloated, but it worked. It worked on OS X, it worked on Linux, Windows, Kinex, Android, iOS. And now, you remember, probably on the university or when you guys were starting to program or you heard this, that Java is compile once, run everywhere. But it's not because you have Java C, Java MA, Java something. And here you have actually a C++ code that you can code once and run everywhere. You have to modify a little thing here and there sometimes, but it usually works. And it's KML, a language that runs on top of V8. V8 is the library from Chrome to run JavaScript. But it was a little bit modified to load small files instead of big JavaScripts. And it also uses a Git, and it can interact directly with Q objects. So you, if you have in your program a Q object, you can just pass it to the V8, to the KML engine, and it can interact with it. You can call the properties, you can call the functions, but it doesn't interact with C codes now. My whole core is in C. How the hell I'm going to interact with it? I cannot. So I need to do... Oh, sorry. There is no drawing primitives on KML, which is also a bummer, because if there is no drawing primitives, I cannot do the profile. The profile is the, the little fancy graph. And on KML, I can do rectangles, and I can do texts, and I can do a combination of rectangles and rects. For, for real, for real. I, I don't have anything on KML that is more than a combination of rectangles and texts and maybe a pix map. Can you, hmm? can you not load all the Q widgets somehow? That you no, you can't. Them? You can't load any kind of Q to widget inside of KML. Okay. Unless you go to C++ and you create a new KML object that loads the pix map for that widget. Oh, okay. okay, so there is nothing ready for that. But it can interact directly with QPainter. So you could use QPainter for that, but it's not really performance because it is done in OpenGL. And if you use QPainter, you are interacting actually with uh, PixMaps. And the act of sending a PixMap to OpenGL every frame is time consuming. <laughs> and you can also use JS Canvas because KML is built on top of JS and JS has a canvas. You could use that, not performance. Don't do that. Nobody does that. Don't, don't even try to do it. Well, actually, we on KD, we are doing that. We have three libraries for that. Because uh, we had to experiment. And for a desktop, that's mostly OK, but not for a mobile. Mobile doesn't have the power as a desktop has. So we could not use that, because our graph is just too huge. <sighs> this is painful. So. Struct dive uses a double linked list with two pointers that have a few other members as a C pointer that has a few macros to work on it. And we need to transform that on a C object to throw this to the KML. And create a model because MVC and KML are made to be used together. So let's duplicate the code. And by duplicating the code, we actually managed to make this to work. And uh, now KML has code to deal with dives and related things because, well, we need to work with dives. But it was painful. But it worked. This is an actual picture of the program working on uh, uh, Android. And it's even blinking because it was really 
a lot of work to make this work. It was two summer of code projects because the first one, the guy just gave up and never answered our calls. It was not really good. But we still had the problem with the profile. Oh, this is using Kirigami. Do you guys know Kirigami? <coughs> So Kirigami is a library that the KDE developers are building on top of KML to make the application not use the device-specific information for widgets. We want to use something, five minutes. Okay, I need to run. We need to, damn it, I hate to run. We need to show the application as a unity on everywhere. Every device should have the same face. So we started to using KML. Kirigami, sorry. But the profile was also a problem. And we couldn't use the JS Canvas, we couldn't use the OpenGL by hand, because OpenGL by hand is just too painful and I don't have the time to learn that. If any one of you knows how to use OpenGL by hand, please help us. Uh, we had KD charts, Qt charts, and we could try to export our current charts somehow. I tried Qt charts and Qt charts, and none of them worked for what you want, because uh, you already talked about this. No current charting library had what you had, what you wanted, because we wanted to put a lot of axes overlapping on top of each other. We wanted to make them not really show, because we already have the information on the curve. Uh, we wanted to invert some axes to show uh, the graphs upside down, and it was hard to do that in a pretty way using the current things that we could. So we ported everything that we could to Kimmel okay. and the profile, the cute widget that you told them. How can you put a cute widget? We had to write a C++ class. And it's a little bit of magic because we had to do this bit of code just to make it show correctly on the screen. And I don't think that you can read this. It's not made for reading. It's just because I want to show you how we did it. And there is a lot of magic functions there. There is a lot of magic numbers that we have no idea why they are there, but they seem to work. <laughs> yes, and it worked. It appeared. And we are happy. And this application is actually running here in my iOS that I can try to show you. Ah. This is the application. I don't have access to the data right now, so I cannot show you running that, but it's loading. <laughs> We still have a lot of code on C. We still have the lack of an actual KML developer because I am a cute developer, cute widget. I've done 10 or 12 years of C++ development with Qt for the desktop. My head doesn't work for KML. And we have a constant API breakage on KML because we have KML controls 1, 2, they are incompatible. We had Kirigami 1 and 2, they are compatible, but they are using KML 1 or 2 that are incompatible. So we had a lot of issues on that. And it's hard to get the documentation because they are still creating it, so hard. So we need more people. Please, if you guys want to try to work with Linux and annoy him, please join. Yes, we need artists, we need testers, we need divers, preferably programmers. <laughs> yes. And it's actually true. Come, join us. You might miss Linux and he will pay you a dive someday. <laughs> and questions? Sorry, I don't have the time. I have a plane to catch right now and I need to run. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and I finished it in time, which is more awesome. So, I think I have one minute. Anyone has a question? Yes. Have you looked into rendering the graph using a shader or having multiple shader effects on top of each other? Uh, we look into that, but for that we need to know OpenGL. <laughs> I have no idea OpenGL, and you want the FES. Yay. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. So, people, thank you very much. <laughs> and I really need to catch a plane. Thank you.